you are welcome to my channel still on zosomiasis that is going to be about prevention and control today if you haven't subscribed to my channel please kindly do without further ado let's go those in school of epidemiology will agree with me that prevention will be either primary prevention, secondary prevention, or tertiary prevention. So let me define prevention as far as zoosomiasis is concerned under the following headings. Primary prevention. This will include all measures to prevent the occurrence of zoosomiasis. For example, all measures to prevent exposure. As we continue, you can you know, pick the primary prevention by yourself. Secondary prevention. These will include all measures to minimize the effects or the impacts of cytosomiasis. For example, that can be mass treatment of those that might have been exposed. We don't do that often, but we can also have screening tests done, give prasequantel in endemic zones, and follow up with travelers who must have visited the endemic zones and treat them with prasequantel later on. That is all about secondary prevention here. The tertiary prevention will include all measures to alleviate the impact or schizosomiasis in all affected individuals. For example, rehabilitation of those with neuroschizosomiasis who may be down with damage to the brain and spinal cord. And those that may be having problem as part of the complications involving the cardiovascular system. For example, we will go into carbomonally later on while addressing you know, clinical features or signs and symptoms. So, the tertiary prevention will be all measures to alleviate the impact of schizosomiasis in those that are already affected and they are faced with complications. Now, for us to enjoy this presentation very well, I have put a link here for the life cycle of schizosomiasis. Why that? I said during the presentation of schizosomiasis life cycle that the life cycle will form the basis of all other topics that will go through on schizosomiasis today. When it comes to prevention and control, the knowledge of the life cycle will be very, very helpful. So if you want to know more about the life cycle of schizosomiasis, please kindly click on this very link. Now, thorough and true prevention will start by having geographical knowledge of where we can find schizosomiasis. In other words, the epidemiology of schizosomiasis will guide us a lot. So to travelers moving from the Western world, the non-endemic zones, going to any part of the endemic zones of the world, the first step is you should know the endemic zones. So check your world map right now. If you are about to travel, if you are traveling to a place where you think that may be Chisosuma Japonicum, that will include you know, China, specifically at Giant River Basin, also in Philippines and Indonesia. If you travel to that part of the world, then be careful. You may come across, you know, contaminated waters with a carrier you know, of Shizosuma japonicum. 
When it comes to Stosuma Mansona, eh, if your journey will take you to Sub-Saharan Africa, South America, particularly Brazil, or South Caribbean islands like Aruba, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Dominica, Bonare, Curaco, and Martinique. What? Sorry if I didn't produce that rightly. You can come across the Osuma Masonai. This may not be the end of the list, but at least I want to try as much as I can to guide you. If you don't want to come across the Osuma Imatobio, then when you are traveling to Sub Saharan Africa and Middle East along Tigris and Euphrates, even southern part of Arabian Peninsula, then be careful. You may come across the Osuma Imatobio. Then, when it comes to Shilsuma Intercalatum or Guinness, that will include trip that will take you to Congo, Gabon, and Cameroon. If you visit you know, any of those three countries, be careful. Shilsuma Intercalatum or Guinness could be found there. When it comes to Shilsuma Mekonge, that will be found no, in Laos and Cambodia, both along the Mekong River Basin. So be careful. Chisosuma Malayansis will be found along the peninsula of Malaysia. So first thing first, know where these you know, parasites could be found. Then be careful. The second step to take as traveler will be you should avoid the following. Avoid swimming, bathing, canoeing, rafting, scuba diving, kayaking, and the rest in fresh water. In those regions already listed earlier, canals, lakes, streams, springs, pools, ponds, anywhere you can. Think of that the sicaria could be found. Avoid. Then you can do the following. The reason why I brought this out is sometimes you need business you no know, reasons to be in those parts of the world, or you are gonna be living there now for some time to work there, and you are a traveler, you don't know anything, now you are knowing something. Okay? Avoid all those things that I've just listed you no know, a while ago. You can do the following anyways. You can get the fresh water if that is the only thing that is available, but boil the water, okay? Before you drink or bathe with it. So you can do that. You can also freely swim in ocean or any sort of water that is salty. Yes, even if you are found in a deming zone. It is okay to use chlorinated water for all purposes. Yes. Appropriate waste, like appropriate boots and thick clothing, will be necessary when you are going into the water or springs or pools, ponds, streams, lakes, or canals in endemic zone. Okay? Um, if you are going to stay along there, please, you can, you know, do. All those things. If you have bit in fresh water in those parts of the world, then please toil very well. Immediately you are done bathing. Now, to travelers, the third step to take will be. Upon return from the endemic zone, you're welcome. You had a nice trip, right? Good vacation, right? Mm -hmm. Please, right now, go to the grave. Go and tell the story about your trip, the water you know, exposure, 
whether you are sure or not that you've been exposed to contaminated water with a carrier, just go and tell that story. Your physician will take appropriate history of the timing that you left, you stayed there, and returned. That will be calculated. And he or she will determine whether or not you need certain investigations. If you do, that will be done. And then we'll also determine whether or not you will be placed on Francis Quantum, whether it be given Francis Quantum. But that would not be done. I mean, Francis Quantum will not be given to you unless the physician has established that your trip has spent six to 12 weeks. Six to 12 weeks. Why that? Francis Quantum is meant to kill only adult ones. And we will not get that until after six weeks post exposure to this occur. So go and see the physician who will guide as for that. Also remember, while the in the endemic zone, you might think that, oh no, I was not swimming in the river, not found in the canal, you know, not so much exposed to lakes and so on. Mm -hmm. I only visited farm and then play with some animals and then you know, help the farmer to do this and that and so on and so forth. In endemic zones, go back to the life cycle of stosomiasis, some animal, the host. So, let that history be told to your physician. Lastly, to the travelers, then I'll leave you alone. You may choose to do this if you must not be in a deming zone. You can be making use of salty water and seas. Yes, you can bathe, you can swim in the ocean. Then you are, you are fine. Why that? The intermediate host, the snakes, the mollusk, will not be able to thrive in salty water and seas. To those living in the endemic zones of the world, you are not left out of prevention and control. That can be mass treatment, and that could be done periodically. That is what the World Health Organization has suggested. Here, Prize Quantel will be made use of. But remember, I've said before now that Prize Quantel will target only the adults' worms, not the elves. But the probability of transmission may not end with the use of Prize Quantel because, in between, the eggs could still be shared in the rind or stew. However, the use of Prazer Quantel could be helpful to almost everyone, but most importantly, the children. It will decrease the mature warm body, decrease morbidity due to its eggs. Remember that children carry the highest parasite body. Repeated mass treatment will increase the resistance against reinfection. And that will be done immunologically. But the quantile will be given at a certain dose. I'm not going to drop that here. If you want to know, come and check my channel for cysomiasis treatment. Now, it will be given to all school children greater than four years. But the World Health Organization is okay. The World Health Organization is in support of giving price quantity in endemic zones to everyone that is just one year and above, including pregnant women. They are not exempted from mass periodical treatment. Some will give this once in a year to everyone. Some will give it twice in a year. Remember, and I have to repeat again, but the quantile is meant 
to kill only the adult ones, not the eggs. So transmission is still possible in between. Yeah, and the levy can still continue, particularly when the eggs will land in suitable habitat for them. Then they will actually gain, and the cycle will continue. Still on endemic zones, and what we can do to minimize tosomiasis, you can hamper or restrict, impede or disrupt the transmission by doing two things. Number one, decrease the contact with the larvae. How can we do that? Let there be proper sanitation, cleaning. Remember, Cleanliness is next to godliness. And remember also the life cycle. I've told you the life cycle will guide us through everything else we are going to talk about here. Now, the life cycle. Remember the faces for Chisosuma, Japoninkum, Mansonai, Mekongi, Intercolatum, no Guernesis or Mariensis. Remember, Uran for Shizosuma Imantovia. If there is adequate waste disposal, sewage disposal, then you may be you know, restricting, reducing, and decreasing you know, the contact with the possible larvae that could be found in the water. Let the pools be clean, clean the pumps. Let there be safe water supply, pipe on water. When people don't need to go to the flowing stream to get water to drink or water to bathe with, then this carrier will not be able to penetrate their skin. Right? Mm -hmm. Correct clothing. If you must be visiting the rivers. And then let there be protective footwear. Because some will say, I'm not swimming in the river. I just pass through, just crossing the border to another place. But if your feet are exposed to the Sakaria, it's going to bite you there, get to the air follicle. Now, and then remember in the life cycle, right? Uh -huh, lymphatic and venous, and then general circulation and so on. If you have been in query contaminated water, then vigorous toileting immediately after. You can use insect repellent also after non exposure but to travelers in endemic zones go with that repellent please then the second thing we can do to inhibit or restrict transmission will be to handle the intermediate host kill all of them yeah clear the ponds the pools you know clear all the lakes kill all the snails use chemicals like monoxide example we include copper sulfate and lastly in endemic zones we are waiting for vaccination it's not your hair and not your work but it's in the making the world is waiting. Teamwork will help all of us. With that, I've come to the end of this presentation as per schizosomiasis prevention and control. The next presentation will be on the clinical signs and symptoms of schizosomiasis. Some will call it clinical features. Thanks for listening. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and watch out for the next presentation of Josomiasis. I appreciate it.